Hello and welcome back to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. My name is Mike Freeman. I'm the pastor at Valley Christian Fellowship in Longview, Washington. Thanks for joining me again today as we continue to walk through the New Testament. Today, finding, finding ourselves in Luke chapter 20. Now, what we're going to see today is, once again, the religious leaders, they are going to attempt to trap Jesus. They're trying to, to corner Jesus and get Jesus to say the wrong thing so that they can um, really so they can get rid of him. Uh, but once again, they're going to fail. Once again, Jesus's words, they're going to be seen as exquisite, as amazing, and really revealing of Jesus as uh, the one who is above all. And so let's, ju- let's dive right in. Why don't we jump in here? Uh, Luke chapter 20, verses 19 through 26. Here's what the scripture says. It says, the scribes and the chief priests sought to lay hands on him at that very hour, for they perceived that he had told this parable against them, but they feared the people. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be sincere that they might catch him in something he said. Uh, Jesus is showing them that uh, that they are they're terrible leaders, that they are they are the whitewashed tombs, that they they are leading people astray, they know Jesus is talking about them and his parables, and so they're becoming offended. So they they send spies who pretend like they're interested in what Jesus is saying. Let's keep going. It says, so to deliver him up to the authority and jurisdiction of the governor. So they asked him, teacher, we know that you speak and teach rightly and show no partiality. Notice the flattery here. But truly teach the way of God. Is it lawful for us to give tribute to Caesar or not? But he, Jesus, perceived their craftiness, and he said to them, Show me a denarius whose, li- whose likeness and inscription does it have? They said, Caesar's. And he said, Then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were not able in the presence of the people to catch him and what he had said, but marveled at his answer and became silent. Now this is, this is incredible. They try to trap Jesus. They try to trap Jesus into saying something against the, the Roman government. And they're trying to get Jesus to say, oh, you know, you shouldn't pay to Caesar. And then they can accuse him before the, the governor and Jesus could be arrested. Or if Jesus says you should, well, then he could lose credibility with the Jewish people who, uh, who hated the Roman occup- occupation. And, uh, and Jesus, he doesn't answer in either of those ways. He says, let me see, let me see a coin. Whose face is on it? Whose name is on it? Caesar's. And Jesus says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. Now, this is, this is an incredible answer. This is the kind of answer that leaves them stunned and silent. What do they say against this? Jesus has just owned them completely in his response. But here is where I want us to land today. Here's where I want us to land today. This passage, we can teach about paying taxes. Yes, I get it. Okay. More than that, though, so often we stop at talking about, okay, well, we we should pay taxes. Uh, But but I want us to hear that Jesus's point is not about taxes. Jesus's driving message here, render to God the things that are God's. What, What is it that is God's? What is it that God has the right to? What is it that God has ownership to? Well, let's just be really clear. He is the creator of heaven and earth. By him, you live and move and breathe. There is not one square inch in all of creation that is not owned by God. It is all his. You and I, we are his. How much more so for those who have been redeemed, who have been bought back from the slave market of sin, who have been saved through Jesus in the payment he, he paid with his death and resurrection. He, he paid a price with his blood to save us. We are his. Let's just, let's just sense the implication here. Jesus says, give to God the things that are God's. 
Well, what does God own? He owns everything and he owns us. He owns everything. So when we give to God the things that are God's, the, the things that he deserves, the things that he is due, he, that means we give him ourselves. That means we give him the worship that he, he deserves, the praise and the honor. We, we put him in the very first place of affection and in the greatest allegiance. We love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We are al aligned with him. We are allegiant to him more than we are to our any other human agency or, or organization. He is God and he deserves. He deserves all praise and glory. He deserves our highest affection and, and our highest loyalty. We give to God what is God's. This means he, is, he deserves a greater affection than, than any person. Now, the amazing thing is when we love God first, he, he increases our love for others. It's not a sum total game here. When we love him first, he gives us the ability to love others even more. This means that we, we have a faithfulness to him more than we have a faithfulness to our political identity. More than we have a faithfulness to our country. I mean, it, these things aren't bad, but, but we are faithful to him above all else. We are citizens of heaven above all else. We are children of God more than anything else. And so this, this ancient way for our modern day is simply a moment to pause and say, am I giving God my life? Am I trusting him? Am I following him? Am I seeking him? Do I love other things more than I love him? Am I more dedicated to something else rather than being dedicated to him? See, the ancient way for our modern day is to give to God that which belongs to God, which is everything. 